Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, June 11th, the uh, Thirsty Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, We've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question and in our Tiger's Den or YouTube channel. Any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to La Show. All the indices in the red out here in, in a large way. The Dow's off 1,445 points. The uh, semis are off 85. The uh, Russell is down 88 points out there. Big moves to the downside. Spot volatility up in a large way as well. It's above its 50-day exponential moving average. 36.16 is the print right now. It's up 31%, basically. Gold's up 15 bucks. Silver is uh, basically flat. So, uh, light sweet crude is up 3 bucks. We've got a caller on the line. Let's go right to our caller. This is going to be Jim in Palm Harbor. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing good, Steve. How are you? Very good. Thanks uh, for asking. Mm -hmm. And Walmart, which I know you've been eyeing for a while as a uh, purchase. So uh, tell me what you're looking at, how I can help you out. Um, well, I had one of my support levels at like 119.48, and I was just, uh, I think it's still probably going to go a little lower, uh, especially after today. But uh, just wondering what you thought about uh, a long position. I'm, I'm planning on holding in a long time once I get in. But uh, sure, uh, sure. So, you know, um, so Walmart probably. So this this is kind of an interesting question um, because Walmart, in the end, uh, when the next major bottom comes in inside the Dow. Uh, Walmart is probably one of the winners out there. So the question becomes during this decline, which could, could last for, this could be just a seven week decline, or this could be one that lasts for, well, into 2021, 2022. So I don't know which one we've got out here, but you know, Walmart seems like it should be one of the winners out there. So uh, from a long-term standpoint, well, first, let's take a look at the daily time frame. Let's take a look at where are we trading in relationship to profiles. So, well, because you're talking long term, Jim, the first area of my focus would be on the monthly time frame. And in the monthly time frame, uh, it appears right now only early into June, but it appears that last month's close, the month of June, was a uh, false breakout to the upside. Uh, we can say that right now, of course, at the end of July, if there's a close above 122.98, that's the number, Jim, then that'll say, well, Walmart is very strong. But if not, then your buy in Walmart on the monthly time frame or one of the buy areas would be 110 to 113. Now, if price continues to move lower and we see Walmart begin to close on a weekly basis below 120.26, well, then price will have gotten inside of its weekly bearish structured profile. 
The key level of support there, Jim, would be 117.65. That's the center. It's a bear structured profile. Because this profile formed and basically price was above it, um, that becomes, because that's also the area where buyers and sellers are located, 117.65, that would be the key level for you to watch. If Walmart on a weekly basis, close below 117.65, then that's signaling to you a move back to the 104 level. Now, the daily time frame, uh, just trading in between profiles, but we can see that this the third profile that has formed since the high, or the second profile since the high out here, and looks like price will pull back to 119.98. Now, how can Stevo say that it looks like price will pull back to test the bottom of that profile? Primarily, Jim, and see how I'm actually talking to you, but I'm really just having a conversation with myself out there. But I'm assuming that's the question you would have asked me. Um, it's because uh, Stevie's green line on the daily time frame chart changed colors two days ago. So it changed from green to red. When it does that, and you know this, it tells us that the price oscillator is below zero. When that happens, we anticipate price and that line to catch up to each other. That's what transpired today. It's that test that reveals to you the market's true intent. Well, what is the intent? So far, test and rejection of that level, we have a falling price oscillator below zero. This says that if we see a close below 119.99, that's its support level, the bottom of that box, then then we're going to see price head down to 110.94. I believe, Jim, that for the long-term buy in Walmart, you've, you've got to be real patient here. You've got to be real. Uh, you know, look, I know that I'm one of the few folks out here, uh, and I said this um, when when this whole COVID-19. Uh, process went down and we were two weeks into the we were two weeks into the shutdown out there and I was on Tom's show when I did it I can picture right here and I uh, said like Paul Revere riding through the streets of our charts out here that uh, we were going to go and uh, take out the lows in March I still believe that to be the case now my focus there is for the Dow because we've seen this this uh, this um, um, uh, this uh, this this paradigm shift in the market, this wave of creative uh, destruction, um, uh, which was brought to us by a guy named Schumpter out here. And this is where we're seeing uh, the winners out here, the Amazons, the Netflixes and 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 the uh, work at home uh, entities out there. But that's not going to stop these markets from moving lower. And what we've got out here, Jim, in the bigger picture, you cannot and I'm not really, when I say you, I'm not really referring to you specifically. We cannot just focus on be U.S. centric out here. If we do that, we're trading without all the information out here. And we're going to see a liquidity crunch. And when we see liquidity crunches, we've been through them before. We were just through one in this pandemic, COVID-19. Before that, it was the 2007-2009. It'll become a worldwide uh, crunch out here, which is going to, so I, I really think, now that's if you subscribe to my philosophy out here. And if you do, you'll sit on your hands for a while with regard to Walmart. Does that help at all? Sure. Sure. It helps a lot. Um, okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, I, so I, you've, got some, you've got downside targets out. Liquidity, got downside. Though, uh, yeah, I th I've been hearing there's lots of liquidity because of what the Fed's doing, all, all the things they're doing. Uh, so you're saying that there's not as much liquidity in the markets as, as uh, what the other people are saying? <laughs> They've done such so a great question. We're about to go to heartbreak. If you want to hold on and we come back, I can answer that for you and we can further that conversation okay. because you have that question. Somebody else out there has that question. But the answer is the Fed cannot provide the liquidity for the entire world. So there is a lack of liquidity. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's off 1370, S&P down 135. We're on the line with uh, Jim in Palm Harbor. <clears throat> and uh, during that last segment, I had mentioned uh, lack of liquidity in the market. And, and Jim asked the, uh, the the very logical question. Well, well, he didn't ask it like this, but it basically is, what do you mean, Steve-O? All you have to do is turn on the uh, news, and it's just talking about the Fed injecting just unlimited amounts of liquidity. In essence, is that the question, Jim? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So a little little paraphrasing there. And so so here's what we know that the Fed has done basically. They they supposedly, even though the money hasn't the the blank hasn't the fan just yet, about three trillion right into the economy, uh, supposedly uh, not into the economy, just three trillion worth of liquidity where wherever it's gone. Now, if we take a look at just the U.S. And during that break, I was trying to find the most recent article I read. Uh, from a reliable source, I couldn't find it. My recollection is, and if I, I it, you can't hold me exactly to this number, but the shutdown in the U.S. So forget about the. I know the global number is about 30 trillion in damage. That was the initial estimate of what transpired, and in the U.S. it's somewhere like around 10 trillion. So, and I'm pretty good with numbers. I'm a math guy. I'm a bean counter, and so I know that when you start with 10 trillion and you only add back 3 trillion you're 7 trillion short somewhere and just trying to get back to normal so has the fed injected liquidity sure has it been equal liquidity for what was lost no is it even close no is it really 3 trillion no a one and a half trillion is just spent out in the repo market 
And I don't even know what the exact figures are on that any longer. And that was just simply to stop and try to stop a worldwide contagion of liquidity. The, the repo market was a, is a situation where banks don't trust banks. Banks do not trust, hey, I've got this set of debt out here and I need some I need some cash to inject into my bank to take care of the demand by customers, you know, for whatever checks they've written or what have you. You know, will you, this bank here, bank A to bank B, will you bank B, you know, take this and, and obviously you're going to charge me a small amount of interest out there, you know, for the overnight lending. And bank B said, not a chance. And so, no, the Federal Reserve um, and the central banks out there, they're screwed. They're stuck in a corner. Yeah, Powell's got to put on a great face out there, of course. But can you imagine if the central bankers were out there telling us the truth? What would that do to the market out here? So, no, I don't believe for a, a second, not even for a second out here. In fact, Jim, it kind of goes into another question that somebody had written in. Um, and was asking me to explain, and it was a fairly long email, but I can, But to, to sum it up, the question was, he thought that the Fed had just gone crazy because now the Fed is talking about uh, loaning directly to Main Street out here. And, and that was, I think, a big part of the uh, speech yesterday out there. And um, what most people don't realize, you know, this is where history helps. And, and so much of my thinking comes from taking a look at history, historical information, charts, patterns, and so forth out there. That's how the Rhodes Mintum indicator top and bottom pattern was developed, just by historically taking a look at charts. But most people don't realize that when the Fed was created back in 1913, is that the correct year, Jim? I think it was 1913 out there, um, that... Its, its initial charter was, in fact, to make loans to companies, corporations. That was it. And, and the reason that it was done was uh, really because of the 1906, 1907 earthquake, 1906 earthquake in San Francisco, which ended up leading, that was part of leading to the 1907 um, uh, contagion and, and uh, um, market problems that we had, liquidity event that we had out there, I think, because the Heinz brothers tried to tried to corner the uh, copper market and then they got caught, uh, they got schnookered and uh, and because they had gone out and, and uh, tried, I think it was the Copper Corporation of America or something, I don't think I have the name of the corporation properly, but these guys had gone out there, all kinds of margin and uh, in all that debt, and then all of a sudden the banks realized that they were on the hook for all that debt. It was J.P. Morgan, I believe, who was the one that actually stepped up, along with a bunch of other banks, about 100 other banks that contributed into a fund. They even had to go to the New York Stock Exchange because at that stage, very similar to what we have going on here right now, we've got uh, folks, you hear folks talking about breaking up um, Amazon and things of that sort, right, talking about um about you know competitive situation breaking up monopolies so to speak that was the exact same conversation jim if you go read the newspapers from 1906 1907 1908 you're going to see the exact same conversations going on out there and before uh before um jp morgan stepped in to save the day he wouldn't do it until he got the new york stock exchange to agree to not come out and uh, go after he had to convince roosevelt uh, to uh, not go after companies and break them up because that would have created just simply another problem. So the Federal Reserve, when it was initially created, was simply, you know, I talk about uh, global capital flows. So we can take global capital flows and come just back to 1906, 1907. And what they realized, what, what the, 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 the crisis in 1907 and the year, it was really a result of the 1906 earthquake in San Francisco, where at that stage, because we were predominantly a... Uh, uh, a uh, agricultural entity, about 40% of, of what everybody did was in the agriculture marketplace, was that because they had the earthquake in uh, San Francisco, that created a real shortage of being able to get cash and money um, to it or onto the East Coast and back and forth. So that's why they created these branches inside the Federal Reserve. And it was because because at that stage we were an agricultural company, You know, during the planting season, farmers needed to be able to borrow money. 
right during the harvesting season, that's when they had their profits, they could pay that back. So that was just the, the Federal Reserve was to be able to truly stimulate the economy, which was loaning money to corporations out there. If in fact, that's what that so that is a positive event, in my opinion, what Paul was talking about. It was it was, you know, they created the Federal Reserve that way. And then because of World War One, uh, it was instructed, you know, by by uh, by the uh, administration at that stage to stop buying corporate debt and to only have uh, uh, government debt to fund the war. And we have never gotten back on track until, in fact, you know, yesterday's conversation by Paul was the very first time I've ever heard him talk about. I don't know why he didn't give the history lesson and just go through it out there. Uh, but that would be a positive event. But, you know, that's that's being even shunned out here. So I know that's probably a whole heck of a lot more than what you were asking for. But it, it does provide some context out here. And no, I do not believe that the Federal Reserve can save the day of the world out here. Yeah, it's, I, no, I liked it. That was very interesting. And I did read a book once on how we got the Federal Reserve, the secret train ride from New York with Rockefeller and a bunch of them, rich guys that went down to Jekyll Island, I think it was, in South Carolina. And that's how they had this plan. Island, it, right. the, book, right. the book wasn't real favorable about central banking, but it quoted like some of the founding fathers that were against. Central uh, banking central has banking. been well, around since. Central banking has been around since the beginning of time. Um, in just mm-hmm. one, one, you know, even if it wasn't referred to as a central bank, the entities or whomever ended up fulfilling that uh, function out there. So they're they're required out here. It would just be good to have them doing the right thing, which is not the whole government debt, you know, fandango. It's it's uh, that's yeah. just. Uh, so, so hey, we're, we're about to go to the second break, and, uh, you know, good to talk to you as always, Jim. Just uh, be patient when it comes to Walmart. You bet. We'll be right back, folks. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dawa 1436, S&P 143. Uh, let's go to a couple questions inside the uh, Tiger's Den. One was a uh, question, was an entry into a nugget. And uh, so to determine an entry into a nugget, instead, I would be paying attention to the uh, GDX out there. And so your your nugget, your entry into nugget would be based upon the patterns inside the GDX. If you do that, I believe you will be much better off. So if we take a look at the GDX out here, uh, we can see that price is trading with inside its daily profile. It's bullish in structure. So the entry into the nugget would be... Uh, the GDX trading down into 3166 and holding that level. If the uh, GDX um, closes below 3166, the bottom of its bullish structured profile, then what you likely have is an A to B equals CD to the downside. At the moment, uh, that pattern would look like it hasn't confirmed this pattern, but here's what it uh, would look like based upon the data that we have right now that would take you into the 2865, 2694, 2478 kind of level out there. Uh, now does not appear to be the time to enter a long trade into GDX. Why would Stevie say that? Good question. Let's go answer that question. And, and it's just simply a numbers game. If we take a look at the GDX, here's that same A to B equals CD pattern. Let me rid of it out here. Here what we can see, oops, there, turn it off. There we go. So what transpired today, oh, we got Mike on the phone uh, who wants to talk about uh, GDX and uh, dust and so forth. So let's, as long as we're talking about that, let's bring, um, let's bring Mike into the conversation. Mike, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. So with regard to the GDX, I'm just going through it. What, what's your specific question? Well, um, I got kind of have my eye on the GDX um, I'm thinking it may get down to um, like 31.22 over the next couple of days. So I've been very meticulously been trading dust, um, you know, like on an intraday chart, five and ten and fifteen minutes. Yes, uh, I was in and out twice today, and I'm looking at a little bit of a bigger picture. And um, the the price of uh, 31. Um, 22 kind of stood out at me, so I was thinking if you agree with that over the next couple of days. Yeah, so I, I imagine that what you're looking at is your, your 3122. You're probably looking at one of the gaps to the upside or something along those lines out there. Maybe it's the April 22nd area. Maybe it's the... Uh, top of the uh, April 21st. But but what we do know is that 3166, close enough for me with regard to your 30, well, 3122 being the uh, swing point. So you're looking at the June 5th swing point out there. And if we take a look at the profile that formed here over the last three days, it would really be the 3166 level. So not that 3122 can't get hit, but that would be the bottom of its bullish structure. So to go along with your thinking, I don't want to uh, um, to dismantle it. I'll, I'll continue talking about the, the G. But if you see a close below 3166, then we've got some type of Gartley cell pattern that would be uh, unfolding. So what I was going to say earlier here is if we take a look at today's price action and we look at Stevie's green line, today was a test and rejection of that level. And that's the signal that, OK, price should continue to pull back to the support area, which is between 3166 and 3253. If we start to see volume moving uh, to the downside, well, then it could easily take that out. Or the other component is, you know, what is gold doing? Because we have to understand the direction of gold. Now, gold has been trading in a sideways consolidation for quite a period of time out there. And not until that consolidation pattern fails one way or another out here, will we have a ton of information to help us on any of these uh, gold uh, trades out here. Uh, right now, you've got gold trading higher in really all the currencies out here, I guess. So I don't see anything significant there. But you've just got, you do have a new profile inside of gold. And it says that price would have to close below 1689. 
um, to suggest that more movement to the downside. So you've got the consolidation in essence in gold out here. Um, as far as the G, and, and that makes for me that makes it hard to give really great advice on what the uh, GDX is doing. I think it'd be hard for anybody to give great advice on what the GDX is doing. So. I, I get the dust trade. I certainly get it based upon today's action out here, um, Mike. And, uh, you know, price is moving down towards that support area. So is where you start, you know, where you're going to need to start being careful out here. Right. And like I said, Steve, I've just been doing short term, very short term intraday trades because I don't trust. I don't, I, since January, I really haven't held anything overnight. So, yeah. Um, and I, you know, I. Yeah, um, there's so many times where we woke up in the morning and the, and the, the Dow is, might be down 1,200 points or up 1,200. So I've been closing out everything and, you know, maybe doing a little bit after hours to get out of a position, but sure. I'd rather be safe and, and sorry. And Steve, I want to thank you, as always, for all the great education you give us. Uh, I remember back in January, uh, you were talking about that uh, 2020 would probably be a down year for the markets. So thanks again, and I enjoyed a um, little lesson about the Federal Reserve, too. So thanks. Well, great. Well, thanks. Thanks. I appreciate that, Mike. And uh, thanks for calling as well. Always good to hear from you. That is Mike in Ormond Beach out there. So that was, in essence, folks, the GDX. And as I say, I think it's a, it's, it's a hard – it's a hard um, – it's a hard ETF right now to uh, trade out there. And, you know, you've got the U.S. dollar index up uh, 57 cents right now, which is a fairly good size move out here. Uh, so here, here's, here's the scenario. Um, this is what really takes place during liquidity events. And so Mike was just saying, hey, you know, you, you know you, there is a lot of activity, a lot of action overnight. Hello? This is a one world market out here. And so, but what right now we've got gold trading higher by 20 bucks, treasury bonds up by nearly two full points out here, and the US dollar index. What is that telling us? Now, that's the good news. Okay, it's a very subtle thing. That's the good news. That's the piece of global capital flow that you want to understand where it, it where when after the, the blank hits the fan, we're not at that stage just yet, that what, what large capital is telling us, even though they haven't concentrated yet inside the U.S., is this is where this will be their final destination. And the question is just when out here. And um, we'll be able to answer that for you because we'll see it on the charts. It'll be clear as day. And what I fully expect to happen now, there, we could see some there are things that can change this along the way. Uh, but what I but until that occurs out here, when we do make that bottom, the ideal bottom, folks, the ideal bottom, you may not want to hear this, but the ideal bottom for the Dow is blasting through those March lows and then creating one of Stevie's patterns out there, the Rhodes Mintum indicator pattern um, out there, uh, because that will be the major bottom. And then I would be instructing Mike, no. This is the time where you want to hold overnight. In fact, you want to hold it. What we're going to see take place when that occurs, here's what we're going to see. You can put this down on a pad of paper, and I can guarantee it. That's if it unfolds. <laughs> You're going to see the U.S. dollar index go higher. Probably going to see the U.S. Treasuries go higher as well for a period of time. You're going to see gold go higher, and you're going to see the U.S. market moving higher. And why is that? Because liquidity crunch overseas is going to get so terrible out there. Uh, people are going to be afraid of the uh, their government, let alone they're going to know that ours is all screwed up. But they're like, well, you guys are less screwed up. So I'm going with the less screwed up area to park my capital. And that's what we'll see taking place. So what we're seeing today is just a little bit of a preview of coming attractions. But those movie theaters with those coming attractions, they're not open just yet. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. of our new listeners have heard about the tiger's den the tiger's den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet exchange ideas and information in a comfortable moderated atmosphere hear all of the tfnn shows plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts you can test drive the tiger's den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you details on the tiger's den are on the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Duffy asked a great question at the end. I don't know that I'll get to it and be able to show a chart, but Duffy's question was, I wonder what the U.S. dollar in gold did in March of 2009. Here's what I can tell you, uh, Duffy. The gold bottomed uh, back then. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, and it's been moving higher ever since. Gold went from 1,000 to 2,000, you know, roughly in that time period while the uh, Dow was moving higher out there. So we will see that uh, that same repeat uh, when that uh, next major bottom comes in. Let's go out to Overland Park, Kansas, and speak with uh, Robert. Uh, Robert, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for taking my call. And I'm sure you have like lots to. of questions, so I'll get right to it. You know, last caller, you were talking about ugly dogs, and I wanted to know which dog is uglier, the Dow Jones or the Russell 2000? Uh, both. It's it's a uh, it's a it's a it'd be a toss up to say which of the uh, which of the two. I believe that it will be the Dow that is the ultimate leader here on the way down. Uh, and the reason okay. that I that I say that the, the the reasoning behind that logic is that the we had not seen the global flow of capital park itself into the uh, big cap uh, big cap names out here, and so if they didn't park their capital. Uh, in this process here, they're not going to be there, you know, as like a short seller, so to speak, to uh, cover on the way down out here. Uh, but let's face it, the Russell 2000 could be just as ugly or, or even more so uh, based upon the information that's going to continue to come in. I don't know what it's like 
you know, in Overland Park, Kansas. Um, you know, I can definitely share with you what things are like in uh, Palm Beach County, Broward County, Dade County, which is still on um, a version of lockdown out here. And even the high end restaurants that I've had the opportunity to frequent. And I talked to, and over the years, I've become friends with the managers there. And, and so they've, uh, uh, you know, they've shared with me what's going on. And I spoke to two this weekend specifically who they, they were able to keep their businesses going because they did qualify for the uh, payroll protection program. But that ran out last week. So it was easy for them to say, yeah, we we you know we 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 were able to keep most of the employees on because of that, but uh, they're running at half, um, uh, you know, fifty percent level at best. In other words, their seating is set up for fifty percent, but you know they might have a table of four and only two people show up, so they're operating at less than well less than fifty percent capacity. You still have people that are scared to go out. So you see that. So you're, you're not getting the same kind of turns out here. And so I'm seeing even the successful companies, uh, high-end product, um, they're struggling. And they're going to start letting people go, you know. And so the small the, the small businesses, which are truly, you know, the big backbone of, of our economy out here, Robert, um, you know, I only my picture and view of it is what I see in my area. It could be totally different in Overland Park, Kansas, and totally different in other areas of the country. But uh, it, both of those, you know, choose 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 your choose which one. I don't Got know, it. but I, I I do think it's the Dow. Because let's, the let's, okay, huh? Well, well, one one follow up question. So I know yeah. more aggressive traders may have went short the market a few days ago, but I'm a little more conservative. Should a conservative trader wait for a bounce to occur tomorrow because the VIX had such a spike today? That's the only thing you've really got going for you, um, you know, is that's the logical play. And I'll pull up that chart here so that folks can uh, see that. And so if we take a look at the uh, one day rate of change charts out here, I believe that is where right here. Um, so that folks are going to be the uh, blue um, uh, arrows out here. Uh, now, during since since the February top out here, this pattern hasn't worked like it had for you know the last the prior decade out there. So so that's why I'm I'm somewhat cautious. I mean, if you it, but but it is the it is the most logical thing, um, and that is especially like you know we've heard that hey in overnight trading we've seen a lot of these moves higher out there as. Mike or Jim might have uh, pointed out. So, yeah, that's 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 the approach that I would take out here um, right now. Um, you know, is wait to see if we get some kind of bounce tomorrow. Perfect. I will let you go because I know you have a lot of questions to address. Thanks so much. Well, no, no, nothing is more important than you. Uh, so, uh, but thanks for calling, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again. I was right, Robert in Overland Park, Kansas. Now, uh, there was some questions to take a look at. Uh, let's take a look at our market profile so everybody can see those. The market profiles we talked about yesterday uh, did, in fact, hold. Uh, so, But they're well below. Price is well below the bottom of the ES Mini. That's suggesting a change in trend. Uh, the NQ has got uh, lower to move to, and that is the um, 95.69 area. That's its level of support. Uh, the Dow equity future contract well below the bottom of its new profile, 26.610. And the, the Russell 2000 is 13.88. It's the number to watch. We're trading at 13.74. So that's what we've got on profiles. And um, do we have a caller or not out there? I apologize. If we have a caller, I want to go to it. If not, uh, yes. Okay. So let's go to uh, Gary in Michigan. Gary, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Hey, great. Thanks uh, for taking the call. And uh, sure. thanks for all your great work, um, um, subscriber. And you really rocked it the other day in, on that Dow call. So uh, it's, it's it's only been uh, nonstop. So good timing. Um, good. Thank you. I want to, you know, give you some kudos. Um, so um, I was also I'm into gold and silver quite a bit. And so I was curious what your, your comments on the GDX uh, you were just talking about. And, and uh where do you see the uh, range right now? You said it's headed down. Do you think it's going to break on the downside, or is it just locked in a range at this point? 
So specifically with regard to silver, silver should hold the price area of 1685 to 1736. Now, where we come up with those numbers are from the bottom of their daily and weekly profiles, and uh, they are both bullish structured profiles. So, so you know, the question sort of the question that you posed is, uh, you know, do I think it will, Gary, do I think that it will, you know, uh, blow through those areas or, 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 or where, where it might find, I, I don't know whether it will hold or not. But at least what we have for us is a high probability, we know where the buyers are. So that's the cool thing. You and I know specifically where buyers are inside of silver, the July silver contract for their daily time frame. And they're between 1736 and 1771 on the daily time frame. And on the weekly time frame, it's 1685 to 1759. So price is trading right into the support. Um, it's got valid topping signals out here, but I, I, that's your support area. Now, knowing that that's your support area, what what would you do for your trading? Just so I can try to figure out how I can even better help you. Well, I'm a longer term trader. I'm just I do have some capital as employ, um, and because I moved out of one of my gold stocks, I had a huge run up, and um, um, I'm looking now to see if there's was an entry point back again. Uh, but on the same token, I have the same sense that you do that if there's a major sell off. You know, gold and silver get hit typically because uh, of the cash liquidity. So stay, stay, and stay then, on through this, uh, Gary. Stay on through this uh, break here. We'll okay. come back, uh, uh, finish the uh, session up with you. We'll be right back, Thanks. folks. Markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets. This is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, Gary, during that breakout there, I asked our production manager to uh, uh, ask you which stock it was specifically you were looking to get back in on. I try to be a good listener out here. And so you said it was First Majestic Silver, ticker symbol is AG. And also during our, our little conversation, I think I heard you say you're more of a longer term type of. Yeah, uh, I am. But okay. I am doing some more in and out kind of stuff and trying to take some stuff off the table when it seems to be rich and then uh, see where we can deploy it back in. And I do believe that there's going to be this reset like you do. Uh, and um, I, um, uh, I want to see, I don't want to do what I did the last time where I wrote it all the way down. <clears throat> sure. Okay, um, we'll st stay with that short Dow trade for the time being right now. But here on First Majestic Silver, um, when I put up the weekly time frame, so when you kind of said longer term, I said, oh, immediately I'm going to go take a look at, you know, weekly, monthly, just to see what kind of signals are out here. So this is really helpful for you and First Majestic Silver trying to help answer your question. If we take a look at when it bottomed back in March, it bottomed with a TD9 count. When we take a look at when it topped out here in December, it was with Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. So all these patterns, you know, that you've got access to archives on the uh, uh, in the newsletter section. Uh, of the uh, of your members page out here now when this bottom back here in march if you were looking at this chart and i were to ask you and you went long or something back then and i were to ask you where would the rally stop inside of uh, uh ticker symbol ag you would have given me the price point of 1088 because that was the td9 count breakdown level and when we take a look at the high of last week it was basically that 1088 and while it was making that high it was bar number nine of a td9 count out here so it's a perfect example from an intermediate term what is first majestic silver message to us right now and gary that message is it wants to move lower and by lower 869 is the next target on the way down, then 784, and then the ultimate buy would be 619. But like you said, we have to take this one day at a time. But right now, that's the intermediate term message for First Majestic. Okay? Really appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. you bet. Thanks, uh, thanks for the call. Good to talk to you. Folks, stay tuned. Two more great hours are left. My favorite polar bear, David White, he's up next. Tom O'Brien to take us on home. And I'll see you on fabulous, fantastic Friday. Have a terrific Thursday, folks.